In this video, we're going to look at how to solve a fifth degree polynomial equation. So, in this case, for number one, we have a fifth degree. You can see the polynomial on the left side. It's arranged in descending powers. The exponents are 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then a constant, okay? Exponent would be 0 in that case. That's what you want. The right side is 0. And what we need to know here is that if you have a fifth degree polynomial, in this case, fifth degree equation, you expect to have five solutions okay you could have five real solutions you could have uh, a mixture of complex or imaginary solutions but the, de the degree tells you how many to expect okay also if the degree is odd which is the case here you expect to have at least one real solution if it's an even degree say a six degree they might all be complex they're easier to solve though if you have at least one real solution because the objective is to get this thing broken down. Uh, if we can get it down to a quadratic, we know we can solve a quadratic equation by factoring, completing the square quadratic formula. Also, if the coefficient of the lead term, in this case x to the fifth, is a 1 or a minus 1, then we know that the rational solutions, if it has any rational solutions, will be factors of the constant term. In this case, negative 1. And those factors would just be plus or minus 1. So we know that 1 or negative 1 are going to work as possible solutions, rational solutions, if it has any. Also note that if I didn't have a negative 1, if the last term here was 5x, every term has an x, so you expect x equals 0 to be a root or a solution. So here I have the uh, coefficients in a row here. So what we're going to do to find uh, possible solutions here is uh, use synthetic division. Okay, so for synthetic division you need to have the uh, polynomial in descending powers, and we do here. And if there's any missing terms, we have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and then the constant. We don't have any missing terms, but if you do, you have to fill that uh, entry with a zero, as you'll see in the next example. So I'm going to try one. So I'll put this over here on the left. And then the procedure for synthetic division is to bring this below this line here. So I go 1 times 1 is 1, and then I add that to the next entry, which we get negative, negative 5 and 4. Give me a negative 4. Continue, 1 times negative 4. Go to the next row, column, negative 4 here. 10 negative 4 is 6. And then 1 times 6 is 6. Negative 10 and 6 is 4. Negative 4, I should say. And then 1 times negative 4 comes over to this column. 5 and negative 4 is a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And then negative 1 and 1 is 0. So if I get a 0 on the uh, last entry, then I know that 1 is a root or a solution of this equation. And I also know that x minus 1 is a factor. Okay? Now, one thing to know, once you get a root, assume that it's repeated. So try it again. Try it again until it doesn't work. So I put a 1 here again, and this comes down to the next one over here. So see what happens. These are the coefficients of the original polynomial. So this is x to the fifth here. This now reduces to x to the fourth. Okay. And then x to the third, x squared x and the constant okay so one repeat the procedure one times one is one bring it over negative four and one is a negative three one times a negative three comes over that's a negative three there six and negative three is a three okay one times three is three goes over to the next column minus four and three is a negative one Continue. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 and negative 1 is 0. Okay, the last entry is 0. So I know that 1 is a, a, a repeated root. Okay, a repeated root. So it worked twice. So th this is now the, uh, the coefficients of a third degree polynomial. We go one more time. 1 here. And then we Bring this down and continue. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. 
continue one times negative two comes over three negative two is one one times one is one negative one and one is zero okay now these are the coefficients then so we started with x to the fifth these are the coefficients for x to the fifth polynomial and this is for x to the third or so I should say x to the fourth and then this is a third degree so this is the x cubed and now this becomes an x squared so let's just take this and write it out I could continue this procedure and put a 1 here but now this is just going to be an x squared it, that's what it reduces to so this is the coefficient of the x squared and then the x and then the constant so this is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, okay. so we can easily find out what uh, makes this 0 or the zeros of this uh, polynomial because we can factor it into x minus 1 and x minus 1 or x minus 1 squared. Okay, so if I wanted the factors of this polynomial it would be five factors of x minus one. So another way to write this polynomial is x minus one to the fifth. If I take x minus one to the fifth power, it will give me this polynomial. Okay. Just in case you want its factors. But in this case, we want the solution. So we can say x then is equal to one And this one has multiplicity. Five. So that's your solution. X is equal to one with multiplicity five. So that, that's, the, that's the, the main thing you want to do when you're solving a uh, equation of a high order, whether it's a fifth degree, a sixth degree, or seventh degree equation, you want to try to find some rational solution and use synthetic division to get it reduced down. Once you get it down to a quadratic over here, you can try to factor it. If it doesn't factor, you could use a quadratic formula. And of course, that could be you could have irrational solutions. So let's uh, clear this. Okay, we have x to the fifth minus 15x to the third plus 10x squared plus 60x minus 72 is equal to zero. Again, the coefficient of the uh, lead term x to the fifth is one. So we know that if this has any rational solutions, they're going to be factors of negative 72. So the numbers you would try in your synthetic division procedure would be, say, a plus or minus one, a plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six plus or minus 12, plus or minus 18, plus or minus 24, plus or minus 36, plus or minus 72. Because those are the factors of the uh, constant term. So you would you, uh, do the synthetic division, pick one. I would, I would always start with uh, the smaller ones. And uh, if the last entry is zero, then you've got yourself a solution or a root. So we try negative two, it didn't work. So then I try a 2, just to save some time here. Okay, so I put a 2 right here, and then I bring the 1 here. And I want you to note here that because I didn't have an x squared term, I, I filled in that entry with a 0. Okay, always remember that, or else you're not going to get the uh, right solution in general. There could be situations, so by accident you get it, but you always want the 0 if there's a missing term. If there's no x term, then the 60 would be a 0, and so on. So now we go trying to as a possible rational solution. Two times one is two. Bring it over to the next column. Zero and two is two. And then two times two is four. Minus 15 and four, and, and four. So minus 11. And then two times minus 11 is a minus 22. Ten and minus twenty-two is a minus twelve. Two times minus twelve is a minus twenty-four. And then sixty 
get a negative 24. It's a 36. And then 2 times 36 is 72. Minus 72 and 72 is a 0. So since we got a 0, that basically, what that's telling me again is that if I divide the uh, polynomial by x minus 2, I get a remainder of 0. Which is telling me that x minus 2 is a factor, which of course tells me that x equal to 2 is a root or a solution. Now, always assume, if you get one that works, assume that it's repeated. If it doesn't work, then go to the next number. So I try, I try uh, 2 again. If that doesn't work, then I'll try a 3 or a negative 3 and continue with the list of factors, trying the list of factors we got from the factors of minus 72. So I'll put it to here again. Bring the 1 down. Okay, 1 comes down, and then 2 times 1 is 2. Add them up, 2 and 2 is 4. Then 2 times 4 is 8. And we add these up. Minus 11 and 8 is a minus 3. 2 times minus 3 is a minus 6. Minus 12 and minus 6 is a minus 18. And then 2 times minus 18 is a minus 36. 36 and minus 36 is 0. So that tells me that 2 again works. So, so far, 2 is a solution with multiplicity 2. Okay, well, it worked a second time, so let's try it again. Bring this down. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 and 2 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. And then add this up, we get 9. And 2 times 9 is 18. Minus 18 and 18 is 0, so it tells me that 2 now is a 0 of multiplicity 3. So in other words, this thing, this thing has factors at x minus 2 taken to the third power. Now, I could try it again, and it's not going to work. The 2 is not going to work. So then I would try a 3 or a negative 3. However, since I have it reduced down to a quadratic, and notice the first one, this is, this is coefficients of, of x to the fifth, and the next row gives me the coefficients of x to the fourth. These are the coefficients of x to the third. So since I did it again, this then is the coefficients of x squared. So it's going to be 1x squared, and then just going descending powers, then the 6 is the coefficient of the x, and then again reduce the power by 1, that will be 0, so x to the 0 is 1 times the 9. So right here, these are the coefficients for the uh, quadratic. And this one easily factors into x plus 3 and x plus 3. All right, perfect square polynomial, or I can say squared here. So that of course tells me that x that x equal to negative 3 is a solution. And because the factor is repeated, it's multiplicity 2. So conclusion then is the solution then is I would say the roots of this equation are x equal to 2, and this one would have multiplicity 3. That means it's repeated uh, three times. Or another way to say it is that uh, x minus 2 is a factor three times. Okay? And then the next one then would be x equal to negative 3. And this one has multiplicity. Two. So five solutions. In this case, they're all real. And they're repeated. Okay. The solution of x equal to 2 gets repeated three times. The solution of x, minus, x equal to minus 3 gets repeated twice. Now, if they had asked you for the factors, in other words, let's say, let's say just they gave you this 
polynomial by itself, not an equation, just a polynomial, and they would say factor it. Well, you would use the same procedure, and you would write, you would write your answer in that case as x minus 2 factor it three times and x plus 3 factor twice. So x minus 2 to the third x plus times x plus 3 to the second are the factors of this polynomial. So, uh, uh, assuming you, uh, it was just a polynomial, not an equation. So if you multiply these out, you get, you get this answer right here. Thanks for watch, watching. We'll see you next time.